Welcome to September's LECO Challenge, the last question of the month. Today's problem is first missing positive. Given an unsorted integer array, find the smallest missing positive integer. Example 1, 2, 0, the smallest positive integer would be 3. Example 3, 4, minus 1, 1, the smallest positive integer would be 2. And the example 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, the smallest positive integer would be 1. Now they want our algorithm to run in O of n time and use constant space, so that's going to be tricky. But let's initially start with how we might just solve this brute force. Well, we might think, well, we can sort this array and check to see which is going to be the um, not the increasing by one positive integer or something like that. But that's not very efficient. Let's think about how could we do that um, using extra space instead. One of the ways you can do that is by having some sort of set that's going to keep track of what we've seen so far. So we'll have a set called scene. And what we'll do is set our output as one at first, because that's going to be the minimum positive integer possible. And we'll say for n and nums, uh, we'll add it to our scene set. And while at, um, output is still in scene, we will increase our output. And doing this is actually going to return the right answer. And it's actually quite fast, surprisingly. But is this O of n time? And technically, it's not, right? Because it's O of n here, but we'll have this while loop being multiplied by however many numbers that we might have. It'd be the range of O of n. So it ends up being like basically n squared. So how could we do better? Well, let's think about like if we had an array like this, one, two, three, four. One of the things you might notice pretty quickly is our minimum positive integer will be in between the range of 1 all the way to n plus 1 inclusive. And the reason for that is this is kind of the maximum positive like numbers that we could have, right? So here the, example, the answer would be 5. And that would be indeed 4 plus 1, that would be 5. Now it doesn't matter what the numbers in here are, if they're like negative 3, 40, regardless the number for the least positive integer has to be within this range. Here, the answer would be 3, and that indeed is still in between 1 and n plus 1. So how can we use this knowledge to take advantage of um, going through our array just one time to figure out what is the minimum positive integer? And we could do that by having some sort of array that's going to be represented by all zeros at first, and each one of these indexes is going to represent a number. It'll be like one, two, three, four, and we actually need one more for five. And what we'll do is go through our array and just mark these if we've seen them before. So we've seen one, so we'll mark it. Seen two, we've marked it. Negative three, I mean, the neg negatives and numbers out of this range don't matter, so we don't care about those. And then we just go through our array and say, oh, three is our minimum one, so the answer is three. So we can do that, and that would be O of n time, right? So. Let's do that. First, we need to append one more number to our nums. We'll just make it 0 because uh, it doesn't really matter there. And what we'll do is initialize n as length of nums. And we'll set an array. This array is going to be all zeros at first for blank and range of n. Now, what we want to do is go through our nums and just mark these this array if we've seen the number before. So. Uh, what we'll do is say for i in range of n, if the number is within this range, so if numbers that i is what? If it's greater than 0 and less or equal to n, then what we'll do is take this number and update our array. So we'll say nums i, increase it. Now, once we're finished there, actually, I need to subtract 1 here because the 1 is actually going to be represented by the 0 index, right? So make sure to keep note of that. And then we'll just go through our array and say if array.i equals 0, that's going to be our minimum one. So just return the i plus 1. And let's see if this works. And that works. 
Now this is great. This is all event time. Yes, we make two passes, technically three, but whatever. Um, it's still all event. But this uses extra space, right? It uses O N space. So the hint here was, well, using this approach, how could we solve it without using extra space? And that's difficult. That is very difficult because if we had some example like um, like this, we might go through it and keep track of like what's the minimum number so far and say, well, one, it's gonna be one here, one here, one here. But once we reach one, we have to increase it to two, right? But unfortunately, we kind of lost track of the fact that two still exists. And unless we go back and search the entire array again, we can't figure that out. Uh, so, use, so using like just integers is gonna be, using just integer variables is gonna be really hard to like, what if this was like a three here? You know, it has to go up oh, one, two, three, four, five, all the way up. So what could we use to store that information? Well, what about the array nums itself? Could we somehow tinker with that without losing information from the original nums, but mark somehow that yes, we've seen this number because we can use this array to mark as these representing these, the range, right? One, two, three, four, all those numbers could be represented inside of this array. But the trick is how can we make sure to keep this information of the number itself and add that it's been marked? Well, one of the ways we can do that is we can add the length of this whole array, which would be what, nine, and have use a modular every time we check to still keep the information of what the original number was. But each time we like update it with n, um, we can say that, yes, we have marked this position. So if it's greater than n, then we've seen this number before. So we can actually use the number array itself to do this. Okay, so knowing that, that's gonna make it a lot easier, um, but the trick is, it gets tricky because we want to make sure to keep that information. So let's first go through our, um, so let me do like this. Let's first go through our nums, and what we're gonna do is first get rid of the numbers outside of our range, like just make them zeros, because we don't care about those. What we're gonna do is say, all right, if the nums i, if it's what? Uh, less than zero or nums i is greater than n then just mark it as zero because why do we care about these numbers they're not going to make any difference now only numbers that are greater than zero are um, are what matters here right so or I should say within the range, but basically at this point, it's going to be greater than zero. So for i in range of n, we'll say if our nums.i, if it's greater than zero, then we want to mark our number itself using the number as an index, but don't lose the original information. So to do that, we're going to use the modular function. Um, and I'll show you what I mean. We'll get nums, nums.i, it has to be subtracted by one number, and we're gonna just add n here. And to make sure to account for like duplicates and stuff, we'll do the modular n in case we've been updating this number multiple times. So at this point, these numbers that we've seen before are gonna get marked up. And now all we need to do is go through our nums again. And what we'll do is say, okay, look, if nums.i divided by n, okay, if it's basically less than n, since if we've seen it, it should be greater than n, then return the i plus one, right? Because it's zero indexed and we want to return the number itself. Otherwise, if we can get this whole thing, then just return n. That's gonna be the, the maximum number here. So let me see if this works. I forgot, there is one weird edge case um, where the very first number, the zero index, should be representing one, but there are cases where that number could actually be equal to n. Uh, so when that happens, like that kind of throws a little screwball. So what we'll have to do is store that as a temp variable and say, all right, num zero, store that here. 
and just check at the very end, look, if nums at zero still equals the temp, meaning we haven't touched it, then we know the answer is one. So that's just to take care of the use case, um, weird edge case, I mean. All right, so let me submit that. I'm not positive I did this right. Looks like I did, great. So this is O of n time. Yes, we pass it three times, but we use no extra space. We've just been updating our nums instead, and we get the right answer. Yeah, so this was a pretty hard one. Uh, I think this right here is quite brilliant. If you can realize that, yes, we can mark this array index uh, without losing the information, this is like what's key here. And this kind of reminds me, it's, a, it's like a mishmash of pigeonholing, um, of of hashing there's a lot of interesting things going on here so i definitely recommend taking a look into this more that's it thanks for watching my channel and remember do not trust me i know nothing